Hey, what's going on, people? It is that time. I know you've been waiting for so long for this episode. Uh, we've been waiting so long to give it to you, me and Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, I wanted to make sure that you got this episode uncut, unfiltered, just real raw. So the entire episode in its entirety um, is going to play um, right after this. I want to make sure that I thank some sponsors Um and get this thing popping here. First and foremost, let's get to um, the real reason why we're doing this, and that's Black Boys Win. So if you've not gone to blackboyswin.com and checked out the amazing things that we're doing there uh, for young black uh, boys in America, you're going to be blown away because we've got all different types of mentoring and tutoring and things of that nature. And speaking of which, we have our sponsors, Hack Electronics, which is simplifying technology for students of all ages and creating the news. So remember, don't take your cell phone from your kids. Teach them how to use it and really use it. So you go to HackElectronics.com. That's H-A-K, Electronic Course Partners. So anything STEM comes from Hack Electronics. Also, when it comes to traditional education and help and support, we have an entire arm of Black Boys Win that does nothing but that. You can go to It's Not Complicated. It's Not Complicated Tutoring. InkTutoring.com is our official tutoring partner for Black Boys Win. Make sure you check them out at InkTutoring.com. And shout out to um, Jay Veal over there at InkTutoring.com for becoming a partner with Black Boys Win. The response I've gotten from the Vayner Nation absolutely phenomenal i could not be happier i could not feel more blessed or more honored so uh without any further ado man we're going to go ahead and get this thing uh knocked out if you have not had an opportunity to uh look me up check me out all that good stuff you can text the keywords business bully to 31996 and uh, get hooked up with some really, really cool stuff there. And hopefully you're digging through the archives. You're listening to the podcast. I'm going to ask you to subscribe and share it because this is an amazing, amazing uh, time in what we're doing and all the partnering. And again, thanks so much to Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, if you have not seen the um, the video, the Daily V that happened or some of the clips that are running around on YouTube, Gary donated uh, $15,000 in order to help uh, black boys win make it happen for a lot of really really good um young black boys out here so we're excited we're thrilled and um this is going to be an interview that everyone who's who's been talking about this and has been waiting for will definitely be happy with so without any further ado raw and uncut let's start the business bully podcast hashtag bully versus gary v let's go two of the world's most controversial entrepreneurs known for innovation and creativity are on a collision course dave anderson the business bully a man famous for hard-hitting questions and cold hard facts a best-selling author speaker and the man behind million dollar brands like the ricky smiley morning show the benson watch company and more the bully is no stranger to pushing the envelope and destroying emotional people with the ugly truth gary vaynerchuk AKA Gary V, international speaker, social media guru, and the owner of Vayner Media, a company that has developed campaigns for several Fortune 500 companies like GE and Pepsi. Gary V pulls no punches when giving his opinions. These two giants will have a no holds barred conversation that will leave you breathless. Gary V takes on Dave Anderson on the Business Bully Podcast. Subscribe now on Apple Podcast Stitcher of BusinessBullyShow.com. I'm far from complaining. Well, thanks just, for having me in your house, man. I appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure. I was just telling the fans, man, I love the water. Yeah, the water's fun. Yeah, I do love the water. How was your weekend? Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Spent it with my uh, my youngest daughter. My oldest is in college. You, Man, you look great. God bless you. You lie I, like a rug. Uh, no, but man, I'll you look. I, I would've... <laughs> you're the second person who's told me that this week. Because it's the truth, man. You do not look like you're <laughs> old enough to have somebody in college. Yeah, no, my oldest daughter is 18. Um, she was born when I was 23. Um, my youngest daughter good. is two. Thank you, brother. So do you. You look good, man. Yes, indeed, man. I got to tell it. you. Let's do it. So I'm ready. Uh, we rolling? Yeah. Awesome. All right. You need to level or anything? You good? We're good. All right, man. All right, people, let's get right down to it, man. This is the ambassador of arbitrage, the uh, the uh, harem leader of hustle. 
Gary Vay Nurchuk is in the building. What's up, man? Life is good, man. Thanks for having me. Man, I'm happy to be. Thanks for having you. This this man can buy and sell me like 15 times a week. I might want to rephrase that because I'm black and he's <laughs> not necessarily. Yeah, I'm not trying to get in trouble here. Nah. That's your words, not mine. Hey, man, no. Nah. But uh, uh, yeah. seriously, appreciate appreciate you having me on. No, it, it, it's important, man. Um, let's talk a little bit about how I found out who you were. Okay. So I did the Breakfast Club, and automatically my book sales skyrocketed. You know, great thing. I've been working since I retired at 34 because I left radio and realized that I couldn't be who I wanted to be in those confines. You understand I what I mean? Of course I do. So um, I kept getting these emails and Facebook posts and tweets like, you're the black Gary Vaynerchuk. <laughs> you're the black Gary V. Like, you just don't give a fuck what comes out of your mouth, man. And I was like, who is this? Who the fuck is this dude? <laughs> like, A, B, as a black guy, yeah. I don't want to be the black version of a white guy. Respect the shit out of You know of what you. I mean? Like, yep. and, and, and I said this on Facebook. I said, I'm not the black Gary Vaynerchuk. Let me be great on my own. A hundred percent. You know, I got my first radio contract at nine. I put Ricky Smiley in the syndication. I put Wendy Williams in the syndication. I've, I've written books. I've done stand-up. Like, let me work on my shit. I walked away from a very lucrative career to start another lucrative career. You know, like left it all when everybody told me I was nuts and I was crazy because you I didn't knew. want. Yeah, no, nah, I knew. knew. Like whenever you make that crazy move, you know. Yeah, you know. So you know, you're for also me, suffocated by the alternative, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I I can't like the idea of it makes like literally makes me I ill. It. I get it. You know, so I was like, um, oh fuck this. <laughs> You know, and then I, I got the research and I was like, okay, cool. Hustle, like that. Quit your job, like that. Garage selling, like that. You know, <laughs> passed on Uber, regrets it, like that too. Yeah, um, you know, and so for me, it, it was one of those things where this had to happen because people were like, well, if, if, if Dave's going to say it, then Gary's going to say the same thing. And I'm like, okay, there's got to be some shit we don't agree on. I'm sure. You know. <laughs> I hope uh, so. Well, first of all, fuck the Jets. Uh, there you go. <laughs> and that's my biggest one. So this this interview is over. Like wh- disagreeing on that is worse than disagreeing on God. No, the Jets no. are my God. Are you? Who do you like in football? I'm, I'm, I'm an Eagles fan. Well, listen, that's interesting. Yeah. You you might find this funny. Mm. I don't have second favorite teams. I think that's bullshit. Right. But I love the Eagles, and let me tell you why. Huh. I love Philly because it's got real grit. Yeah. It's a real city. Yes, it is. You know what I mean? Like I. Like it's a real thing. Like, right. like I don't want to get people mad at me, but like Chicago and Boston, like there's other like <laughs> Dallas. Like, there's a real thing that I like about Philly. Not that those places are bad. I right. don't like them as much. But there's a bigger reason I love the Eagles because mm. really fuck the Giants. Yeah, fuck God, the God, one, Giants. the one thing that Eagle, my Eagle, Greg Moan, if you're listening, big shout out to you, Sam Taggart, Drew Bailey. The one thing that all Eagle and Jet fans can agree on is fuck those blue guys. I hate the Giants. I really do. I, just I do. Don't I honestly, I hate the Giants. Like, why are they there? Like, Besides the Patriots, the Patriot Giants Super Bowls. I did not watch one play. Never did. Not, not, not a snap. A, not a snap. Not at all. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Um. So. So yes, we have to disagree on some stuff. Yeah, we, we have to disagree on some shit. <laughs> you know, and and for me, it, it was more of a situation like I want to talk to this dude. Like, if I can talk to this dude, then you know we can find out things because you have an amazing audience. I have a really awesome audience. It's not anywhere. I don't have hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't do private jets. I took a Greyhound in this bitch. My Why? Because, God damn it, it's cheap. And I'm paying tuition cash, bro. Man, listen, you know this. And I think, I don't know how much you've been paying attention. Like, the dollar argument is, is silly. I'm not going to end up, listen, I think I'm going to end up buying the jets. Yeah. Which means I'll have a lot of money. Yeah. But I promise you, my impact as an open source, I'm starting to finally articulate it. Mm-hmm. I'm calling it open source entrepreneurship. Yeah. The, my my like you know forget about Greyhound and private jets. Right. My legacy of like putting people on and bringing value while I got mine is gonna matter exponentially more to me than the dollar amounts. You listen. Mm. There's a lot of people that are gonna make more money than me. Yeah. But I really really am gonna try to make sure nobody has a bigger impact than me. That's some fly shit. Um, just because so it's the, truth. Yeah. Just it's it's the absolute truth. And of course, this dumb fuck phone wants to be a dumb fuck phone. Don't so, worry, let's have somebody else do it for you. Okay. Go ahead, Iris. Yes. Go ahead, my man. God damn it! <laughs> I need that. Let <laughs> me borrow Iris for like ten you minutes. You got it. She's um, the best. No, man. Everybody's like super friendly, which is what I Appreciate did. It. And I asked Tyler. I said, "Okay, man," because my people had, had been talking to Tyler, and we're like, "Okay, well, what you know? What does Gary want? Like, what can we do for Gary?" And he's like, "No, he, he's cool. Like, it's no, we'll just do it." And I'm like, "Okay, he's got to want something." Because everybody fucking wants something, but I, you know what, what you know what I want? Absolutely. 
I want the truth. Mm -hmm. I want when you go back home, whoever you talk to, relatives, business associates, that you say things like, man, when I walked in there, everybody was smiling. I want, I want, you know what I want? Mm. I, want to, I want to secretly know what people say behind my back, mm-hmm. and that's how I live it. Okay, that's awesome. I so, think so. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. So no question off limits, because I asked Every, how Tyler said, cool. I'm not scared of anything. I'm not trying to scare you. Like, that's that's not my shit, you know? Meaning, meaning yeah, as like, a slang. You're not going to run, like, hey, never read. You could ask yeah. me how much I hate Tom Brady. Like, anything you want. Like, I, mean, I just think Tom Brady eats eat, should, should eat major shit simply because that kid lost his job and Tom Brady's still great. He's still got Giselle and millions of dollars <laughs> that he won't even be able to spend. Uh, um, Tommy. So um, there are things that I saw and I said, mm, okay. Like you talk about the market is the market. And while I agree with that, yep. Um, do you feel as though that you have an advantage over someone, say like me? Yes. Damn. You want to expand? Do I think a white man has an advantage <laughs> over a black man in America? Look, there are some who play the colorblind game, Gary. Let's not act like... No, I, I think that's crazy. Now, mm. will I say that you have many more advantages than your grandfather did? Absolutely. This internet thing, and it's not even about like the fact that we've come far with racial issues, which mm-hmm. we have. Right. I'm very aware of what's going on now, but we right. have. Like, I, I tell all my friends who are 23 and black, or women, or right. brown, I'm like, but it's better than 64. And it's better than 1941. Right. And so, but yeah, man, I mean, of course I believe that. Now, I do think the market is the market because of the internet, man. Right. I do think it's crazy. I'm happy. Mm-hmm. I prefer less advantages. First of all, I think I'm good enough. Look, there's a lot right. of white dudes I'm beating in the face every day. Yeah. So I like competing. Um, but I, uh, yeah, of course I believe that. Yeah. Now, if done smartly, mm-hmm. do I think there's advantages in the counterculture moves? I do. I think mm-hmm. you have to be. To me, the big thing is, are you optimistic or are you pessimistic? Right. The thing that I learned living life and spending a lot of time with not white dudes was either you think it's an advantage or a disadvantage. Right. And so I have just seen people in shitty situations. Black women who had two drug dealer parents, something and a couple of kids I went to college with, mm-hmm. who just thought it was an advantage. She was just like, I'm tough, nothing can beat me. I started so from the fucking zero oh, yeah. that nothing from here is what, what's gonna be worse. Yeah. And then I'm empathetic when people are like, fuck man, look how good you have it. And how, you know, so I think it's a mindset yeah. thing. But to answer your question directly, mm-hmm. which I did, yeah. of course I believe that. No, because it's important because there's a lot of people in my audience who feel like, well, Gary Vee doesn't get it. it. He doesn't understand what it means to be black. And I'm like, no, fuck no, he doesn't understand how to be black. I couldn't. Um, can, but, I give, can I give you a bigger one? Yeah. Can I give you a bigger one? Feel free. I think my bigger advantage was my mother. Mm. If you asked me what's a bigger advantage to why I'm gonna win, yeah. it is way more my mother than being a white dude. Yeah. Cause she fucking set me up. Yeah. Real proper. Yeah. yeah. So so I think your mother, and yeah. I'm talking about everybody who's watching. Right. Or your father if he was the stay at home. Whoever raised you. Right. Um, let's go cliche, or your grandmother, right? Let's Let me go that. to every angle. Yeah. Let's, let's go um, to Mimar. Right, right? <laughs> yeah. That is a bigger, is a crazy variable in the way that I see the world. Mm-hmm. The person that was the puppet master of your mindset, mm-hmm. positive or negative. My grandmother fucked my dad up real good. Mm. And my dad won. Right. But she was negative. Mm. Everything was bad. Right. Don't believe in anybody. Everybody's jealous. Everything is bad. Right. The world's out to get you. <laughs> and watching my dad filter the world, mm-hmm. I'm like, fuck, man. I'm glad I don't see the world that way. And that has nothing to do with black, white, girl, boy. Right. So that's how I see it. And back to your audience. Yeah. Of course I don't know. Yeah. They're, they're 100% right. Right. And, 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 and listen, I... I'm empathetic. I'm aware that hip hop culture, sneaker culture, mm-hmm. like, I know I'm in it a little bit more than, like, you know. So I'm empathetic, and yeah. honestly, I can't. There's, I would never fight that. Right. That to me is truth. Mm-hmm. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think um, for me, it was more of a situation where people don't like because sometimes they'll chop you in the sound bites, and it doesn't play itself fully out. And so context um, is important. I think that's tough for all of us, right? Yeah, I'm sure people do that to you too. All the time. Like uh, I get it, man. If you if you take 41 seconds. 
Sometimes I do it to myself. Right. When I'm taking a piece of 41 seconds of me being on The Breakfast Club, meme it and put it on Instagram, and they didn't hear the other hour. Right. You know, Instagram fucks me up real good because it's only a minute. Yeah. To chop up and some of the teams here, yeah. the context is really hard. And so you're trying to get the piece in there in a minute. Right. You didn't have the before or the after. Yeah. And people can take it any way they want. And again, honestly, that's why I think my secret like strength mm -hmm. is empathy. Yeah. When people attack it, I'm like, I get it. They only saw that. They know nothing about me. Right. You know? Yeah. They, they don't know that I built my dad's business for him and at yeah. 34 years old wasn't worth shit. <laughs> like, you know, they, right. they're like, his dad gave him a liquor store. Fuck him. What does he know about the struggle? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm empathetic. No, nah, like my whole thing was your dad didn't give you a liquor, liquor store. You got bored of shit. You went, you looked online. Oh, look, this shit's 50 cents a click. Why not give it a whirl? I'm not mad at that. You know, the thing, like, for me, it's like, okay, if my dad gave me a grand to go blow on business cards and wasn't mad if I blew it, like... That's that, unheard of. That, that's, that's fucking nuts. It's and, like, truth. you know, like, my dad made it, you know, he made a decent living work for the government. He's, you know, like, I come from blue-collar folks. Like, my mom's a teacher. My dad uh, was a cop. You know, so for me, I was like, damn. Like, that, to me, you know, is an advantage. Um, Here's my big thing. Mm. I don't think I should be anybody's role model. I don't think anybody should listen to me more. I mean this. Mm. I think, I think, he, let me phrase. You mm. know who should look at, listen to me? Yeah. 30 to 50 year old white dudes that were born in Eastern Europe, came to America, had nothing, lived in a studio with eight family members, right. and had Russian parents that worked 20 hours a day, mm -hmm. and fucking, you know, yeah. were they hungry? Like, like, then they can look at me and say, that makes sense. But listen, kind of the narrative of this conversation, I'm like, I'm empathetic. Like a lot of people look up to me. Right. A lot of people are like, you yeah. know, I get it. Yeah. But I don't aspire for that. I aspire for suffocating people's excuses because mm -hmm. that is the ultimate way to start. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of people can do a lot of stuff. Right. Especially with this. God damn right. And if I'm the person that kind of made them feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. I'm trying to make people feel uncomfortable yeah. that need to be made felt uncomfortable because they've created excuses not to do. Right. Do you know how many people sit with me who've got a lot of money and are white men and the excuses their parents gave them so much so they're not hungry? Give me their money. I get it. Just, 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 <laughs> look, stroke me out of check. You but, know what I mean? But, but, but you know what's crazy and you know this? Yeah. Everybody's reality is their reality. Yeah. Like they don't know. Yeah. Like it's tough to, tough, nobody can be in anybody's shoes. Mm -mm. No. no. Nobody, nobody was with me when I was crying to my mom like, I, at 18, I would cry to my mom a lot. It was mm. the last time I really cried a lot, except when Garrison Hurst <laughs> broke a 99-yard touchdown in 1999 against the Jets yes. in week one yeah. in overtime. I literally yeah. cried. I was 24 years old, just so everybody understands. Yeah. Anyway, um, I didn't want to go into my dad's liquor store business. Yeah. The great struggle of my early adult life mm -hmm. was knowing that go I knew I was going to be all-time great. Right. Knew it. Right. Knew it. Yeah. And I knew that if I went and got into my dad's liquor store business, that people would dangle it over my head. Yeah. But I knew that I wanted to do right by my dad right. and mom because they did so right by me. Right. No, I, I dig that. I started in radio. My uncle was, you know, he was huge in New York radio, but I never used my real name until I got much, much older and already established okay. my career because I didn't want that. Like I, I saw uh, Secret of My Success, Michael J. Fox movie, and he just went and just like hustled his way it, into man. the situation. Um, Go ahead. Let me ask you this. Please. This one is tough, and if I didn't ask it, my audience would kick my ass, so I'm going to ask you the question. If, in fact, the Jets <laughs> suck, the, no, this is the lead up. I'm, I'm trying to make a point. If, in fact, the Jets suck, do you blame the team or do you blame the coach? As the, if, as the future owner, as a fan today? As a fan today. The answer is you're not sure, but let mm. me explain. Mm. I would first blame the owner. Right. Because I'm a big believer everything stems from the top. Right. Like every single thing broken here yep. is 100% my fault. So I would blame the owner mm -hmm. first. Right. Cool. All right. So back in April. Back in April. Shea Moisture. Shea Moisture. Bruh. Like that was a shit show. Yeah, but the good news is, and obviously, you know, I signed contracts, but right. I could go there because your yeah, audience please. wants answers. Yes. VaynerMedia has never posted anything without client approval in the history of its company. Right. Like we're in it. 
Yeah. Not to mention there was 27 pieces of content. Right. And most people only saw one. They had a strategy. Mm -hmm. We believe in that strategy. I still believe in that strategy. But I'm also awfully empathetic to every reaction about everything and every situation on earth. Yeah. No. And when I tell you, like, and then you could, you, you're getting yeah. a sense for me. The last thing when I go in the grave that I'm going to be worried about mm -hmm. was that campaign. <laughs> Let me say it very clear for everybody. <laughs> the last. Listen, this is, listen. I, right. What makes me so happy mm -hmm. is not what good is happening to me, mm -hmm. it's who I am as a human fucking being. Right. I'm real good with that campaign. Real good. I understand it mm -hmm. because if you're looking at it in one piece, you brought it up earlier. Yeah. If you decided to look at one, one piece, piece and, and, you not the whole and thing. you didn't know there was 27 pieces and there was three that were put before that right. and people decided to attack. Right now we are in the headline reading society. Right, we don't go and, deep. And by the way, I don't blame anybody. No. That's life. Huh. I'm not mad at any community, any situation. Right. The customer is always, the market is always right. Yeah. But intent trumps everything. And I know every truth about that entire process. Right. That's not an L, man. Not an L on my soul right. and my legacy, this company's legacy or Shea Moisture's. It's just not. Mm. No, I definitely feel you on I that. I feel like any person, mm -hmm. even overly emotional on, give me the 30 most overly emotional, not even fair on racial issues in America. Mm -hmm. Sit down for an hour. Let me tell you everything that happened. They walk out. Not even, not even on their mind that anything was wrong there. Right. I, I really mean that. No, I, I, I believe you. I don't listen. I, I got a, I got a bullshit radar that's Good. probably off the, Good. off the charts. Good. And I don't, Good. I don't detect bullshit that's just, from that's you. That's just the truth. Because you didn't run from the question. You know, which is, you know, and, and that was my whole thing. It's like Good. if he, if he squirms on this shit, I'm gonna nail it to the fucking cross. You know, but my thing with it is. Like you know when, what I wish? I wish it was in Gary Vee's world or VaynerMedia because then I'd go further. I just want to be fair. I've already went further than I should right? because I'm trying to be right with you. Right. But like, I wish that was Wine Library because then I'd give you, ev I'd fucking go naked. Right. Um, <laughs> the client stuff's hard with VaynerMedia. Yeah. Uh, they didn't, it's fucking good, man. It's good. I, I, I got it. I got right. it. I watched it. I fucking stayed up 48 hours in a row. Jesus. But, uh, it, they're in a good place. The, intent always wins, man. Right. Intent always wins. If people understood the founders and that team and what they give a shit about, right? Fuck, fuck. man. Yeah, you know. But my whole thing was for me, from from an optic standpoint, yeah. it was just like you know, Rich, um, who you know founded the company. Of course. He was going on a goddamn apology tour, you know, and I was like, okay, but when you look at something like a Kendall Jenner and the Pepsi shit, yeah, not your shit, from from what nope, I understand, nothing not to do with shit. you. Clear, not Vayner. They didn't do shit with the goddamn All Lives Matter because Kendall Jenner drank goddamn Pepsi. Let me but, say this in yeah. the abstract. In the abstract, right? To ever apologize when you don't do the wrong thing is a wrong strategy. Goddamn right it is. I never say sorry for something I don't. And mean. by the way, on the flip side, I love those rare occasions where I get to say sorry because I'll say it. <laughs> right, because you, you know your own shit. Your shit. Nobody fucking listening and watching this is perfect. Fuck no. <laughs> you know. Goddamn. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, and, and so it just looked like Rich was going and taking all of the L's and the owner of the agency that came up with the campaign was like, like, as, and as vocal as you are, it was out of character from an optic standpoint that you were quiet. If, and if anybody asked me like you just did, mm -hmm. I would have been on the record. We were in a sh shitty. So here's a good thing. Okay. You you seem awfully. I like this, but I, it's clear. I, I've now sniffed out in the first seven minutes why you're successful because you're doing homework. Yeah. I respect the fuck out of homework. Hey, appreciate that. Go look how many times I've talked about anything VaynerMedia has ever done about a client work. I couldn't find much. Nine years. I couldn't find much. When I built Vayner, I promised that I knew that everybody was going to be scared that it was about me. Yeah. And so the good news is, if I was out and about in that age and PR week and all that shit every day about this, that, the other thing, we don't, I don't talk about client stuff ever. There's like seven things that I've ever talked about with clients. Mm -hmm. We don't even announce who we do business with. Right. So, um, and then honestly, this is what this is what's tough for Gary V mm -hmm. under Vayner Media. Right, we have to go through these corporations. Yeah, like it's not you know like me to your point. Right, I notice how I said earlier if it was Wine Library or me, be a different I, type of ball game. Like like all look here, day. yeah. 
all day. Because that's your shit. It's, it's absolutely shit. your shit. I can't get sued. I can't break a contract. There's, I can't, right? Deal with confidentiality, uh, non-disclosures, all that of, dumb shit. None of my It's clients, your shit. And I'm sure if you've done any homework on this or maybe people watching will say this. I say all the time, my clients don't do 99% of what I want them to do. No. So, you know, through the last seven or eight years, I have to go through their comms team, their PR team, their org team. Don't forget, they have investors. Yeah. It's not just rich. There's, right. You know, there's, there's people. And, you know, yeah, it's absolutely. Real. So yeah, that's yeah, it's Bain Capital, but y'all wasn't y'all wasn't trying to so, choke them out. But so, that's okay, we'll let that and go. That, yeah, that's a good point, man. The, you know, you want me to really no, keep go, it funky. Like this me, is this is go, your listen. Let me go where outside you're going. of your shit. Yeah, outside of you going, hey, D Rock. Yep. Like, d- knock yourself the fuck out. This is all I do. I don't know if you've ever seen my shit, but all I do is just piss people off. So feel free. Love it. So you said something real interesting right now. I'm backing off. I'm gonna piggyback off what you just said. Knock yourself out. But you guys weren't trying to choke out them. No. That was a that was an interesting one for me to watch. Yeah. He's doing all the fucking right things. That company's doing all the right fucking things. Yeah. Wife loves that shit. <laughs> I really, I really, eh, like, t- the shit that got them in trouble mm-hmm. is them trying to become the trying biggest to expand. Fuck- I want them. To, I want them to become the biggest fucking company in the world. Why wouldn't you? Because here's the thing, right? L'Oreal neglects black. Let's keep it funky. L'Oreal neglects black people. I'm just, just, just. Let's go. Let's go further, because because it's yeah, important not to not even make it a black thing. Right. You know what they were trying to do? Ignore nobody. Right. They're trying to include everybody. Indian let them hair. Know the, everybody. To let them know the product is they universally were doing helpful. All the right stuff. Now, now, growing up in a house where my grandmother, you know, you have to understand, both my grandfathers spent, my one of my grandfathers spent ten years in jail in Russia because he was Jewish. Mm. So I, I had mainly black friends in college. Right. They would come over and sleep over. The first time my dad ever came downstairs, my dad has never met my friends. My dad's a character. He looks them in the face and goes, you think it's tough being black in America? That's my opening, my dad's opening line. I'm like, get me the fuck out of here. I'm 19, right. you know? Right. He goes, try being Jewish in Russia post-World War II. Yeah. And so I grew up in a, my, let me phrase, my parents and my grandparents grew up in a real bad place. The reason everybody died at 50 in Russia mm. is suppression. Communist Russia sucks. Yeah. For all of America's flaws, and we got plenty, and we're seeing them right now, Yeah. <laughs> go live in fucking Belarus and you'll run back here, right? Yeah. It's really, really, really tough because I grew up in a house where my grandmother, every time some Jewish name was on the screen, she would say, a Jew, a Jew. And I would always get upset. Hmm. She would say in Yiddish, a Jew, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so what's really interesting to me about you saying you didn't try to choke out Bain yeah. is they were trying to do the right thing and it was tough that, that the community got so angry off of not giving them benefit of doubt and doing an inch of fucking homework. An inch. No, I'm with you. Here's, Straight up. No, I'm an not. Inch. Yeah, I'm not going to argue I'm, that. Listen, sometimes you got to really dig. Yeah. Like, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guy of life. Yeah. Sometimes you got to dig and you're like, oh shit, your right. great grandparents were Indians? You know, like, like sometimes you got to dig. Right. An inch of homework. Yeah. Just Headline reading, man, we're in a crazy place right now where people are just like, Phew. yeah. I mean, but you got to, I mean, we're conditioned to 100, 140 characters. Okay, now 280. Okay. And great. you have a history, and, and there's history. Right. And when there's history, there's chips on shoulders. So I don't judge. No. I want to make it very clear. I'm not judging. Mm-hmm. I'm empathetic, but I'm empathetic to both sides. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you got to be, number one, it's your client. Number two, like, you have to look, if you have to look By at the By the way, si- I don't, because I was just at ComplexCon shitting on one of my clients because they're losing. <laughs> right? Like, I, listen, the good thing about my life right now right. is... I don't need to be empathetic because they're my clients. I'm empathetic because they were right. My man, I'm trying to go to the grave like all time. Mm-hmm. If I'm wavering for a couple hundred thousand dollars, I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah, you're a fucking moron. You're not worth Got shit. It. Got so, it. So, just so you know for the rest of the time, mm. like what I say on the record is I'm selfish for me. Right. And there's nobody paying me enough yeah. to ever make me waver from any shit. <laughs> you know, and I think if, from... If Brand Jordan came to me right now and offered me $49 million to do a sneaker deal, I would tell them to go fuck themselves because I'm a fucking Knicks fan. Not mad at that. You're, you're an actual Knicks fan too? Yeah. We were doing so well. We, 
But yeah, the they Sixers. Some... But you know what? The Sixers and Knicks have both been so bad for so long. So long. Oh, like, it's just kind of like I'm we so, both want. By the way, honestly, yeah. I believe in the process more than anything on life. Yeah. More than anything in life. Absolutely. I've loved what the Sixers have been doing for the last yeah. decade. It, it takes decade. time, man, and it takes it you takes got, a lot the of energy. Injuries is the variable which has played out a little bit. Yeah, anyway. a little bit. But you know, but, what are you gonna do? Um, next. So, um, I've got I've got people who have questions. And one of the questions I got, so I, I got a client, right? When I yep. when I met her, she had like no money. She was doing plus size lingerie online. Okay. Right. So we began to start, you know, hammering her shit out. And her question was, when you're doing something in that space, but she has all sizes and she also has a supplementary uh sex toy line. Her question for from her to you was, what does she need to do to really compete in such a Victoria's Secret saturated market? I mean, I think Facebook has solved so many problems mm. with targeting. Yeah. The fact that she can actually get in front of the woman mm -hmm. or the, with the sex toys, the men or the women or whatever she's playing with, right. it's just crazy. I mean, you can target, you know, you know, individuals based on income levels, gender, race, where they live, how they roll, their interests. Like, you know, the fact that she can target 40 to 50 year old women, yeah. right? Right. Who make $100,000 a year, who are African American or Indian or white or black or green and are interested in interests that may innuendo towards, you know, more risque sexual behaviors. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know the full details, so I don't want right. I don't know what the full things are, but right. interests of certain sites or right. certain fan pages, right. it's game on. So I think Facebook, for everybody listening, no matter what your game is, t-shirts, wine. You know, lingerie, right. you know, corn on the cob. Like, it's crazy Facebook advertising and $40, $50 in mm -hmm. ads. We're not talking about $10 million. Right. $40 can give you an indication. Oh, shit, three out of the 39 people that saw this bought. Let's, then I'm on to something. Let's yeah, double down on yeah, this shit and uh -huh, keep it pushing. Uh -huh. No, that makes sense. So the kellyscloset.net, you got your goddamn answer. <laughs> so um, this one is interesting, and this one, this one is mine. Um, when you talk about... Uh, how you day trade attention. Break that down for me. I spend an unbelievable amount of time trying to understand which apps, which platforms, what technology people are using. Mm -hmm. So for example, I'm about to launch my public Spotify page. Right. Now I'm a businessman. Of course. But I you know, tweet pictures of the music I'm listening to. Yeah. I have Mike Boyd, big shout out to him, who's always keeping me close to the streets and the right. cool stuff there. Yeah. And then I got my Millie Vanilli and like Michael Jackson and like 80s stuff. Yeah, something wrong with that. Right? Yeah, Christopher Cross is a beast. Yeah, you sailing is the shit. Y'all don't know nothing about it. Y'all wouldn't even thought of. Know. Yeah, fuck yeah. out of here, y'all. Y'all just sit back. Yeah. You do audio, you do video, but <laughs> Christopher Cross is a beast. So, so, you know, Spotify has so much attention that I'm going to say, okay, I'm just going to produce a public domain, get verified, put my podcast on it, and start sharing, and people are gonna learn from me and about me through Spotify, which will then make them Google, just like you had your community be like, you're like, who the fuck is this guy with this ridiculous last name? <laughs> All I'm trying to do is figure out where people pay attention to, mm -hmm. how do I authentically, mm -hmm. and that's the key. Yeah. Because when you fake, when you front, you're finished. Yeah. People, right? Smell that shit out in a minute. A minute. No, we would not be here together if, like, you know what I mean? No. You wouldn't have been interested. You'd be like, fuck that piece of shit. No. Like, no. straight up, right? Hey. That's it. So, um, and same for me, man. Mm -hmm. We're big boys around here. Yeah, no, big no, no. We're, we're so, adults. So, I, uh, I, uh, yeah, man, whether it's musically, mm -hmm. whether it's, uh, hey, Alexa, buy toothpaste. Okay. Mm -hmm. To me, Alexa, buy this. To me, for everybody listening, and not watching the fact that I place. the fact that I just bought toothpaste. Alexa, stop! I just bought a ten dollar and seventy one cent piece of toothpaste in a hundredth of a fucking second. Bottom line. I know I everybody. I can now send you notifications. Alexa, stop! And so the fact that that's real. So now I'm thinking like, okay, voice is about to take over. Right. Podcast, Alexa, Google Home. Mm -hmm. How do I make Alexa play Gary B three sixty five? So to me, it's like. Uh, how do I become that? How mm -hmm. do I integrate there? Yeah. Um, I'm always just watching culture right? and trying to understand where your attention is and mm -hmm. then I'm trying to make written word, audio, video. I have something to say. right? And so I'm trying to box that in contextually mm -hmm. into where people are spending their time to bring awareness to create opportunity for me 
whether that is something selfish like selling K-Swiss sneakers. I'm not mad at that, by the way. Or if it's something like raising money for Crohn's because my brother has it, right? Or my parents are gonna die, yeah. and hopefully before me. And yeah. when they do, and it seems like you love your parents, I like the way you kind of yeah. talked about your parents for a second yeah. there, I'm going off the fucking Richter scale when Bruh. they die. Whatever my mom gets taken with, I, I mean, if she gets hit by a bus, I'm gonna try to make every bus band in li- You're not coming on the Greyhound next time. I'll pick you up. <laughs> like, whatever, because I'm gonna be so right. emotional about it. Right. Or, if I wanna make sure there's a different mayor in New York in 20 years, if I start caring about that shit, I'm right. trying to build a Death Star of communication yep. so I can point that shit. Wherever you ult- need to. And ultimately try to turn every little six-year-old into a Jets fan in America. Oh God, we were doing so good. You just keep bringing it back to these <laughs> fucking Jets. You know, hopefully there won't be a little teeny tiny. Can't, bro, event. you can't hate the Jets. No, I don't the hate Jets the Jets. I just love the Eagles. Do you want to hear something amazing? <laughs> you might not know this. I'm hardcore. This is true. What's There's up? only one team that the Jets have never beaten in the regular season, and it's the Eagles. It's the Eagles. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, we, we gave you we gave you Rich Coat tight. That that was awesome <laughs> that of us. us. Yeah, I know. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. So good. one thing that I saw was I read all your books. Yep. Thank you. Good shit, by the Thank way. You. I bought them all. Like I Thank didn't, you. I didn't like hack those shits. So I literally <laughs> bought them all. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like I can't ask you to support me if I don't support you I do first. The same thing. You know, so like I, I'm not one you of those fuckbacks. You can do another bat- book, huh? You can do another one. Yeah, I, I got another one in the can right now. It's uh, coming out uh, next month. It's called "Sell It Like Jesus: Principles and Strategies of the World's Greatest Salesman." That's coming out literally next month. Next month. Now, do you self-publish or do you have a publisher? I self-publish. I haven't Direct. gotten a publisher yet. Understood. And that comes out next month. Yeah. Great. I'm going to take 100 copies and put it in my lobby and have people take it. Oh, man, that's awesome. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. That's awesome. Yes, indeed. Should I ask for some fucking speaking gigs? God damn it. <laughs> Aim higher next time, Anderson. All right, so one thing that I saw that I liked, but I have a question about. Go ahead. You, you talk about how LeBron yes. just focused on fucking being LeBron, let his yes. boys do the background <laughs> yes. shit. Beyonce doubled down on singing and dancing that and that shit. Yes. I'm with it. Here's my question. Go ahead. You got Wine Library TV. Yes. You've got Vayner Media. Yes. You've got Vayner Sports. Yes. You've got speaking engagements. You've got a podcast. You've got YouTube. Like there are some things that are like Apple integrated product suite. I'm speaking your language. You're speaking mine. And then there's things that seem so diametrically different. How can you tell somebody do one thing when you do so many? It, because I'm an attention arbitrage entrepreneur. And wherever the wherever the eyes and ears are, you're gonna double down. And then I'm just like going through my life. Look, they're gonna look Beyonce and LeBron, for example. They're mm-hmm. gonna do other things in their life too. Yeah. Their skill is so specific. Right. An entrepreneur has more room to paint. Yeah. She or he has more room to paint. But I think I'm doing. It's funny. Baseball cards, wine, the agency, and even me as a human, I'm doing the same shit over and over. I disproportionately understand what people are gonna do before they do it. Yeah. I'm willing to eat shit and do the work, not just pontificate about it. Right. And then I deploy that attention of those executions against the thing. And then I got smart seven years ago and said, fuck, let me build a machine around this skill. Yes. Vayner Media is the manifestation of a platform uh, that is basically my one thing. And my one thing is intuitive understanding of what people are gonna do before they do it mm. and going all in. Investing in Twitter yeah. and you know and Tumblr and all this stuff, right? Yeah. That's what I did. Yeah. So that's how I built the wine business. We had no money. It was, it was not a big business. It, let me phrase. In the context, sure. But we had $14,000 in ad money the first year. Jeez. You know, so like it's more than zero and a lot of people listening are at zero. Right. But 14,000. In the grand to, scheme of things to compete with In a five the... year window to take from three to 60, I made those fucking dollars work. Yeah, every bit. Every bit, man. <laughs> bitches is on the treadmill like, ah. Every bit. And you know, listen, and you know, and it's funny. It's why I'm passionate about doing stuff like this. Mm-hmm. I, after doing a quick audit and kind of intuition of like, right. I knew I wanted to do it. Right. Do you know how pumped I am I'm doing this show? Do you know why? No, I have no clue. Because I want you to use me as a guest of this to get a different level of guest to get you to the next place. I know where I came from. Yeah. And giving back to that thing is the most interesting thing in the world. Yeah. And the amount of, in a world where my hour is my fucking. Yeah, that's mm. a lot of time for you. You know, to me, if you ask me the thing that's most interesting for me, mm. it's the emails you're going to send to the other people or the people when they look or, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. 
brand arbitrage. Yeah, that's point. I do love. I do love the fact that. Like, do you own the word? Like, have you trademarked no, arbitrage? No, I really should. You know, like, I don't funny. know why you haven't. You know what's funny? I'm thinking about starting a wine brand. I was just getting ready to say that wine called and Arbitrage. I've, and I've been thinking about that as a name for it. It's funny. It's interesting. I use it. You know what's funny though? Mm. I'll. You won't hear me say the word in three years. I get on words. I was on Uncanny three years ago. I would use Uncanny because I like the X Man and like you know. Yeah. Like I was on that forever. Right. We've had some words that have come and gone already. I got to think of one or two in the last couple of months. But yeah, arbitrage is definitely the flavor of the year. Yeah. And I, you know, for me, it was like just when I was doing my digging and doing my doing my background. And this was like, this wasn't um, a slow, like this wasn't a fast thing. Like I literally dug in for like months, you know, and I kept going back and forth with Tyler. Like you're a Scorpio, I'm a Scorpio. When's your birthday? November 19th. My oh, man, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, sir. Yeah, tomorrow. I don't have any sneakers, but I wear a size 13. <laughs> Respect. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's done, guys. Seth. Hit him up. I want, if we got 13s, we got a pair from. That's what's up. Um, second, you, want the, you want the leather or the fly knit? I'll let you pick. I don't okay, care. Okay, cool. Go ahead. Um, second thing, um, I love my mom because my mom gave me a very, very insulated sense of me. Like So when I read that, I felt like, okay, I get it now. I see why people compare us because my mom, like I would come home and I'd be like, mom, they made fun of me. She said, why? I said, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a big guy. And she said, that's because I can afford to feed you. Go, fuck them. You know, so I come back the okay. next day and she'd say, and I'd say, Mom, my glasses are fucked up. They don't like my glasses. Big Coke bottle glasses. Say, <laughs> I can afford to make sure that you see well and you'll see shit they'll never dream of. Yeah, man. You know? Yeah, man. And, and that's just what it is. And I try. Is, like, I try really hard to find something or somebody. Like, Charlemagne's one of my best friends. We both graduated from the Wendy Williams School of Technology. And so I call Charlemagne and I say, listen, I'm going to sit down with Gary V. Yo, 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 man. Like, He's great. He's fucking great. Love him. He's fucking great. I said, why is he great? He said, um, Gary said when my book was coming out just to put the damn Amazon link on my uh, on my bio. And he was like, he can't tell me that didn't help my shit sell. Like, it's just the little shit with you. And that's how I'm about. Like, the big shit is easy. It's the micro shit. It's the small little details that, big you know, make the money. Big you and I because we got lucky, brother. Yeah. You ain't I, never lie. That's the truth of it all, man. When I hear your mom say, like, that fucking... It's what I do for my team, even. Yeah. Do you know how much more confident they are just by osmosis of being with me? Yeah, I can I'm believe it. I'm being dead serious, because that's what my mom, if your mom looks you in the face and says, fuck those kids, <laughs> you're glad, like, yeah. that just, you that builds. Yeah. That's real. Because all I had was me. My brother's seven years older than me, so all I had was me. I love that, So, man. you know, so, for me, it was so important. So, I, I, I revert, I apologize. You're good. For you and I, it's easier. The bigger stuff, the, unfortunately, the bigger stuff's the thing that a lot of people need. Yeah. You know, for you and I, shot like we need the. Li- that's where you get value; those little subtle things, yeah. because you got the big part down. Yeah. But the reason I've gotten serious on like motivational quotes, getting right. people's mind right, that's the game. Yeah, because because folks need it. You know what I mean? It's it, big, man. It's, it's hard. big. Yeah, man. So, if you were to die tomorrow, what would you want to be remembered for? That I gave more than I took. It's dope shit. Hey, uh, Iris, any questions on that? Uh, any questions on that Facebook Live? Uh, no, but but let, now, that, now that we prepped them, yeah. get some questions in. Yeah, get some questions in. So, so I see where you're at now, yeah. transitioning in this interview. Let yeah. me flip it a little bit. Let me play. Do you think? What's interesting in culture for you? Now that now we've got some stuff in, like I'd love right. to get your perspective. What are you seeing out there that's interesting? What's happening in culture, technology, business, audio? What what do you? What's interesting? Um, for me, I love everybody and their mom is coming into podcasting. You know, and yeah. you know, I lost my job at iHeart because of podcasting. <laughs> I got hired at iHeart because I was podcasting, That's and I got fired at iHeart because I was podcasting. I and I told him the same thing that George Bush said when he did his last interview as president. He said, "History is going to be kinder than me than you are." And now it's damn near policy. Everybody, Charlemagne's got uh, brilliant idiots. Mm-hmm. Patty Jackson's got Patty and the Millennials. All of these established brands with you know hundred thousand mm-hmm. watts flamethrowers all have podcasts now when i got in with spreaker you know um francesco mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. hit me up and i was i was down nobody wanted to fuck with spreaker it was like me and susan powder you know what i'm saying so you know who susan yeah. powder is they might not but um you know i was like i'm all in because this is some dope shit and you know when that started to hit then iheart came back in you know so for me it, it's to me audio is extremely important i think short form video is extremely important but my money Hands down, live. 
any live streaming, any type of live video, you know, the fact that I have I've been promoting this shit like a goddamn prize fight. I, did you see the promo? I didn't see it. You gotta see the promo. I, I, I called I called Rick Party, <laughs> who um does all like the UFC yep. Manny Pacquiao fights, yep. and I was like, Rick, I need you to do this. Rick was my mentor. He was I the one it. who told me, uh, you know, don't be afraid because what would happen is in black radio, you might not know this. In black radio, black radio drives the dollars, but the white jocks get all the money. So it's like if your country and you're in 14th place, doesn't matter. You got a million dollar contract. I go in there and ask for a million dollar contract. I'm being arrogant, so on and so forth. I get it. You know, so um, he was like, fuck them. Keep keep working. And that's what I would do. So for me, audio was extremely important. And uh, live streaming is, is just extremely important. I think Facebook Live is going to uh, be the thing um, that's going to allow the next whomever to get there. I get you it. Know? But, um, you know, that in culture is extremely important. I'm looking for the next Chance the Rapper to come through. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Somebody who not only has the skills to deliver, but has the audience behind him where he doesn't need the label anymore. Well, I mean, look, that's the most inter- All these kids who, who want to be musicians, rappers, producers, it's talk about the internet putting them on. I mean, the SoundCloud Spotify universe, what that has done. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. And yeah. they all have audiences. Like, everybody's got some level of audience. It's right. just gonna come down to talent. Yeah. You know, Killy in Toronto. Yeah. Nobody's gonna know who that is for four years, but now he can have a million people following him or, or a million downloads on a song, mm-hmm. you know, on, on Spotify. That's incredible. Yeah. Like, it's happening every day. I mean, that's the thing I'm looking at quite a bit. Right. Which is, you know, all these up and coming artists have platform now, mm-hmm. they don't need radio to fuck with them. Nah, not at all. Um, have you had a chance to, uh, you know Mario Armstrong, right? Yeah, yeah um, I've known him a long time. Yeah, me too. I, I did his demo for his first uh, for his first radio thing um, on, on uh, I've known him for satellite. a long time. I met um, him in early Twitter days. Yeah, he, I like um, him a lot. Yeah, his Never Settle show is amazing. I think that He's that's something that's going to also change the idea that you don't need a television station 100%. or a company to... Um, He's a good kid. Yeah, no, he's phenomenal. Good guy. So go ahead. Man. To, um, so to have a talk man? show. You know, so like that was the thing. He was like, yeah, he's like, I'm so glad you get with Gary, man, because you're so motivational. <laughs> you need to be on more stages. You need to go get it, bro. You know, I like we it. root for each other. Like there That's is, good. you know, there's always like a team. And I've always, always found like successful people have other successful people around Because them. they know that they're not eating at somebody else's expense. Right. Yeah. That is the fundamental difference between winners understanding that your success is not coming out of my pie, even if you're a black male and I'm a black male where right. the pie is smaller. Right. Even with that, mm-hmm. you can both eat. Yeah. And that's and that I wish more people understood that. Because everybody's trying to drag down people that are winning. Right. It makes no sense. Nah, like well, shit, get yourself a hook and hit your wagon, god damn it. Like I'm sorry, it's just, just how my brain works. I, I just I can't get it. Um how do you how do you balance your and, and when I say this because I'm not a fan of balance, um, but like I have a wife and two kids. Me too. I'll be damned. Like I'm going to, I'm going to take my kid to daycare every day. Today I didn't because I had to get my ass up here. But um, you know I, I want to make sure I drop in on my daughter. Like how do you how do you handle your family life because most people don't see it. Yeah, I don't share it because we right. keep it private. Um, the best I can, and that's something I want to like start saying more often. Right. It's the first time I've said it exactly that way. Mm -hmm. I don't judge myself. I know I'm trying. Right. The Shay thing. You know how easy that was to answer? Yeah. When you know you're doing the right thing. Do you know how good life gets when you're doing the right thing? I don't have a fuck to give, Gary. You know, I'm trying to do the best I can with my kids, but guess what? What? I'm selfish too and trying to make mine for them, for me. Right. Let me start over. For me, for them. Like, just hacking. Really all in on weekends. Mm -hmm. Like, really all in. Right. Um, last night I did a charity event, mm-hmm. you know, raising, you know, you, you were there for, mm-hmm. for Puerto Rico because yeah, by the way, while shit. everybody's listening, guys, it's so bad down there Yeah, it is. and nobody's covering it. It's real bad. Mm-hmm. And so it was really great event. Like so rare for me to do something on a Sunday night. Mm-hmm. So always on the weekends mm-hmm. and then extreme vacationing six, seven weeks a year, shut down with the fam. And mm-hmm. then the rest of the time, the Lost best the I wall. can, man, the best I can. But you know, the other thing is they're eight, my kids are eight and five. How about you? My uh, my oldest is 18, oh, so 18 my youngest said, is seven, two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you've got a different, you've got an interesting game. Yeah, I do. Uh, mine, uh, you know, you've already lived it with the 18 year old. Yeah. My, you know, what, 
I'm in a funny spot in my life mm-hmm. where I can see a lot of weird, I've, I'm living a different life. Yeah. So I have to be smart. I can't play like everybody else. No. So I'm like, okay, if this is gonna be this ridiculous, like <laughs> let me actually triple down on this moment that I have right now, right. see if I can get to the other side of it where shit is so crazy mm-hmm. that I have the luxury of taking my kids to Japan for the week because I'm speaking there and that pays for the experience and take them out of school. Right. Like things that we'll remember. Right, I don't experiences. Remember, I don't remember fourth grade. Here's one thing I remember. My mom took, actually this is fun to say because tomorrow's my birthday. My mom took me out of school in fourth grade. I was in fourth grade. I remember this perfectly. I'm in Mr. Molnar's science class. Think about me getting this detailed. Mm-hmm. Speaker, Gary Vaynerchuk, please come down to the principal's office. Gary Vaynerchuk to the principal's office. Ooh, Ooh and I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm like a good kid. Like, well, I don't get yeah, it. What do I do? Anyway, I go down there and I see my mom mm-hmm. and she takes me out of school and took me to the arcade mm-hmm. and gave me five bucks, which was crazy because we were keeping it humble back then. Right. And I played video games at the mall all day. I remember that. Yeah. And so like, that's kind of how I'm thinking about it. Love my kids, teach them the right things, be a good dad. Maybe be a kind of dad that my kids are talking about going to a conference, mm-hmm. meeting people. Yeah. Like I'm gonna have to go experiential on them yeah. over the next decade. Right. If I pull this off right, what I'm gonna do with them over the next 10 years is gonna win. Yeah, no, and it's, it's So funny. I don't, to answer, I'm sorry, yeah. I don't judge myself. No, why would you? And I think a lot of people listening should judge themselves less. You're doing the best you can, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, man, it's hard. Like, there's no manual for this shit. Like, I can sit up here and look at your business and say, do this, do that, do this, do that, no problem. Uh, my daughter comes home with an issue that I don't understand, the fuck are we gonna do? You know, it's, it's a different type of thing. 100%. Um, for me, like my mom was a teacher in the Philadelphia education system. It sucks. Sorry, it just does. Um, and I remember fourth grade, Mrs. Porter's class. My mom pulled me out. We went to Sesame Place. She told him I was getting my eyes, uh, getting my uh, pupils dilated. And I went to Sesame Place when I was in fourth grade. It was the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, and listen, there's, you know. I haven't if, thought about that in years. <laughs> if, somebody, if somebody would say, when people say we're similar, it's mom, man. It's mom. It's, it's mom, man. Mom. And it's and it's funny. I'm so goddamn glad. I wish people. I hope people were carefully listening. Mm-hmm. The opening question, and me going more to the mom thing than the skin color thing or this thing. It's mom, man. Yeah, mom's. Awesome. It's a big factor, and that's why, it's why you don't judge yourself, but you realize you're a big factor in the way your kids come out. Yeah. Um, you can't fake environment. No. You know, you just can't. Mm-mm. So some people listening, super wealthy, some got nothing. You're not gonna change that. You're not sending your kid to Africa to build a school. I got all these friends who send their kid to Guatemala. I'm on the board of Pencils of Promise. We build mm-hmm. schools. Mm-hmm. You know, I went to Ghana earlier this year, Guatemala, oh. it's really great, right? Right. So they'll hit me up and be like, I sent my kid you know, to build a school for four days, really wanna teach them the values of, I'm like, you're not teaching them shit. <laughs> They're gonna come back Thursday and fucking buy a thirteen hundred dollar Supreme bag, right? And, and not even with their own money, right? And, and not tired. to flip, yeah. And be tired of it four days later. That's it. They're gonna be tired, stinking, and sweating, and, and angry you know? at you because you made them do something they didn't have the passion uh-huh. to do. Uh-huh. Um, two things. Go. Um, first, um, you reverse engineer me. What do I need to do to get on bigger stages? You, me, ask. Can I get on bigger stages, Gary? Of course. You gotta ask. You gotta decide what the bigger sp- stages are, mm-hmm. and you need to do two things. Mm. Here's my piece of advice. Shoot. Um, you need to bring them, so you need to, for example, do you wanna build up the podcast more? Oh, absolutely. So you need to be guests on other podcasts, right? The best part about this is we're gonna have a nice solid clip here right. on Daily V, and it's gonna be a big deal. Right, it's gonna Appreciate work. that. Yeah, so you just need to basically go map the other people you believe in. Some right. people have big audiences, you don't fuck with them, so fuck it, I don't do that either, right? right? <laughs> other people, big audiences, and you want to be there, mm-hmm. here's what I would recommend. Mm-hmm. Whether it's Tim Ferriss, right? right? Whether it's Joe Rogan, right? whether it's some NPR show, a right. Gimlet show, watch for when they need something. I'm the best to hack yeah. when I got a new book, when I got a sneaker, when I want something to happen. Right. Watch and bring value and ask. It's Good just shit. a game of asking, man. Good shit. It really, yeah, it's really cool. Just look at what's going on out there mm-hmm. and keep doing good work, but then say, they've got a fun, so I was on Breakfast Club this morning. Yeah. Later tomorrow, right? Yeah. And they've got a fundraiser coming up this Thursday. Mm-hmm. They want it to be successful. They're at their weakest 
because they want something to happen. Right. This is where you can jump in and make a piece of original content, really jump on the wave. Mm-hmm. Now you'd already been on there, you have the relationship. You're right. But like map the whole world, mm-hmm. everywhere you wanna be. When Joe Rogan has decided to start a, this company or has a fundraiser or right. has a blitz going on for more people to know, mm-hmm. figure out who you wanna be with, what stage you wanna be on, figure out what brings them the most value, mm-hmm. blindly give them value, mm-hmm. Hope that it leads to opportunity. <laughs> Don't be devastated when it doesn't. doesn't. Right. Don't do shit with expectation. Right. Never works. Expect nothing. You're never disappointed. My mother. I, I need to meet your mother, by the way. Yeah, you can do. you bring her here? Uh, yeah, I can. I can, can do you? that next time she's in. Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Where does she live? Uh, I retired her. She's in Arizona. Love it. Uh, and uh, and then once in a while ask, yeah. and when they say no. Don't be disappointed either. No, no, no. We barely know each other. Right. I just bought 100 books. Yes, other people that have my means too, mm-hmm. who really know you, may buy one. I've got all sorts of crazy stories from my book. I got somebody who made $11 million because I got them into an investment that closed and I reopened it for them. Jesus. And they bought 20 books when I asked them. <laughs> I thought he was going to buy 4,000 because I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I got to be honest with you, it's cra- that was probably one of the best moments of my life. It was crazy how not upset I was. Right. My logical part was like, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> but my real system mm-hmm. was like, look, because you know what's funny? Mm. I know I do that shit too. Let me explain how. Mm. There's certain shit I don't understand. Like, Send a thank you letter when somebody lets you sleep in their bed. Like, like I, I know my, myself. There's certain things I don't know either. Right. That's cordial. That's proper. That's right. the right. Like, like I'll give you a great one. I hate saying this. I didn't know for a long time that you leave a tip in a hotel. Like back in 09, 10, 11, I just didn't. I'm just, you know, we never. Right. We did, took. I took one fucking vacation in my entire adult, uh, kid life. Right. With Wine Library, I never traveled either. Right. So I was a 33-year-old man. Who never had the experience. Who never had the experience, man. Just didn't know. Just didn't fucking know. Yeah. I'll never forget that day when I was with, I don't, I remember the feeling, but I don't remember, it was somebody. It might even be my brother, it might have been my wife. I don't remember, but I just remember the $20 on the, on the like nightstand. Yeah. And I was like, oh fuck. Ooh. <laughs> Whereas in a world where like at, at like you know yeah. dinner or taxi, you know I grew up taking boxes out of people into people's cars. Right. So I would tip like a son of a bitch even you know when I didn't work. have it. It broke me that I didn't know. Right. Because now you like you have all this insane guilt. Like damn, they work so hard and it it oh, didn't click. It I just didn't know. Damn. So anyway, uh, that was a long winded answer to no, we don't all know every right thing, thing to, to do. do. To me, it's more about the intent than that. You right. know. Yeah. Um, last thing, because I yes. know you got to get out of yes. here. Yes. Um, I have a thing that I'm doing um, that I started when it comes to education called Black Boys Win. Black it, Boys Win. Black Boys Win. Because, you know, like in my society, you know, black girls are given the pedestal. Black black boys, they, there's nothing there for them. And if there is, it's They're like. They're given the pedestal as in like, let's. You can do anything. You can break the glass ceiling. You can be whatever you want to be. With, okay. With us, it's like, cut your hair, pull your pants up. You know? I understand. And so what we wanted to do was create something where we create, um, you know, uh, all different types of um, learning modules, all like almost like a Udemy for young black boys, you know, manhood training, things of that nature. Um, and on top of that, we're going to have like celebrity masterclasses. So I'm going to get Charlamagne to do one. Like it's it's a complete thing. What do you think I do? What I need to do to raise the funds? Because I've got it. How and much I put, do you need? Um, right now I need a 15 grand. I'm in. I'm sorry, what? I'll pay for the whole thing. Get the fuck out of here. I Is this it. tape rolling? <laughs> I'm Son in. of a bitch. Now do something with it. Oh, man. Trust me. I will. That That's amazing. Like, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Because uh, it's, it's some motherfuckers now who just... God. <laughs> I, I, Yo, I, like, I just... <laughs> Iris, goddamn, like... <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know what to say. Thank you. Like, You're welcome, man. It, it I really... Ju- you know what's funny? I'm really struggling, not struggling, that's the wrong word. Uh, I'm really focused, I believe that you're gonna do the right thing with it. You got damn I right guess, I am. I don't know what else, to th- that's the way I'll say it. Listen bro, like, it, it was hard. My father, my father, went, I mean, this is it. I was 17 years old, my father got full bled, full-blown Alzheimer's. So the strongest man in the world became the weakest man in the world, he forgot who I was. And I had to watch him die slowly until I was 25. 
And my stepfather, who my mom never married, but same kind of deal. Um, he was a teacher. He always took care of me. He died when I was a senior in, uh, senior in college. My grandfather died two months after he died. So all the men in my life, when I needed them, that period from that like transition, you know, in Ghost. the men, they're gone, you know, and no one stepping in and saying, you can be more than this. You're not a statistic. I don't want to be in America's next hashtag. People see me and they're like, how did you do that? How did you get Les Brown? How did you put Ricky Smiley in the syndication? How is Charlemagne where, you know, where he is and he still rocks with you? You know what I mean? I want them to realize that I want to create what my mom gave me. I get it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I, like, I'm damn, I'm trying like not to be a bitch. But it's not like, about, it, honestly, man, you're, you're, you're executing from guilt. You know exactly, my man, people, I'm will, lucky as people fuck. will one day figure out why I'm a good guy. It's called fucking guilt. My parents did it proper. There's nothing that can happen. I'm unbeatable. Do you know why I'm so out and about? Because if you tell me I'm the greatest, which 80% of the audience does, right. I think I'm shit. Yeah. Because if you tell me I'm full of shit and a charlatan and full of shit, I'm like, fuck, fuck you, you, I'm anyway. gonna fucking slice your fucking throat. So now what? That's what the shirt says. I get it. My oh, man. Gary Vaynerchuk. Thank you, bro. You're welcome, bro. Appreciate that, man. See ya. <laughs> That's how you do that shit.